Monday, and I feel like it is the perfect day for me to tell you about what I feel like is one of my biggest life accomplishments. Are you ready? Ready? Every day when you're a mom, you pour your coffee, you have one sip, and then it gets cold, and then you reheat it, and then you have one sip, and it gets cold, and then you reheat it, and this can go on to like 11 a.m. Except when you take your travel mug and just put your morning coffee in it right away. Yes, yes, friends, it's been life changing for me. So here I want to tell you, I have tried a lot of travel mugs. I've tried Hydro Flask, but I'm going to tell you the Yeti Rambler 18 ounce mug is worth its weight in gold goes in the dishwasher. So I have been using not this mug, but another one uh, for nine months straight, taking it to the beach, taking it to the parks, washing it, taking it to work, basically trying to put it through everything. And it is upheld so well. The reason I love these Rambler mugs is that this one has a screw top. So you can literally make sure that it's spill proof, which again, when you have a toddler, and rambunctious boys, it is like worth a million dollars. So there you go, friends. I feel like it's one of my greatest life accomplishments that I now drink warm coffee all day, every day. workout but here I am my husband has been working 12 to 13 hour days this week every day this week and I've managed to squeeze in a couple workouts thanks to the help of my mom and then just managing in my mindset what was gonna be feasible for this week yeah I just thought I would start sharing some of the workout stuff because it's a huge part of my life that I don't really feel like I've ever addressed here that much um, I grew up in a super fitness minded family, hikes, going to the beach, rollerblading, horseback riding, swimming, tennis, soccer, um, and it really was such a therapeutic uh, skill that my parents gave me to teach me to prioritize exercise because it really calms down my nervous system. So I thought I would start off by telling you a couple of my quick mantras for working out if you are trying to get motivated to work out or if you work out. But um, one is something is always better than nothing. If you can only do 10 minutes a day, if you can only do four minutes a day, it adds up over time. Number two, um, and this is something that CrossFit's really taught me, and that is the more you can diversify movements, within a workout, the better overall fitness level you're gonna have. So like in CrossFit, one of the things is going from push-ups to squats, to kettlebells, to barbell, to running, to bike. Um, and it really taught me that you can be really good at running and really suck at doing functional movement like running and lifting bags of sand or um, so even though I'm not doing CrossFit now, I still try to prioritize in my mindset that idea of um, functional diversified movement. So today I just did two rounds of 10 minutes. I did kettlebells and running and then I did kettlebell deadlifts, burpees and running and I'm pooped. So something's better than nothing.
friends out in YouTube land. It's Sunday night. I'm going to be posting this video tomorrow, but really quickly, I thought I would jump on, tell you about my skincare, and tell you about something that's irritating the shizzle out of me. First up, let's talk cleansers, because cleansers is like one of my favorite topics. Still using, still loving the Marshmallow Face Cleanser by Earthwise Beauty. Then, Lamore from Lamore Mongolia and Pink Moon sent me some of their new oil cleansing balm to try because they know that I love that Lamore Mongolia uses tallow in their products. Tallow is so therapeutic for the skin. It is an animal and de derived ingredient. They use sheep's tail tallow and they also use beef tallow. I'm 100% okay with using Lemore's products because this mindful use of animal ingredients is very central to the Mongolian culture. It's a very skin loving, skin healing, skin restoring ingredient. And yeah, I'm gonna be talking more, I'm gonna devote an entire video to tallow because, because I make soap, I know a lot about its historical use. And because I live in a place with an indigenous culture that I believe should feel free to practice their indigenous culture, I really love supporting this brand. So let me just give you a little sneaky peek at the balm. It's so luxe. My skin has been loving it and it has further confirmed in my mind that I just prefer products that you have to remove with a washcloth and a more soap style or literally soap second cleanse. So I was using and really enjoying the convenience and efficiency of the, the pie cleansing duo, but I really feel like my skin just doesn't do as well um, then when I'm using something that's removed with a washcloth, I get that gentle exfoliation and then I follow with an actual soap product. So for me, I'm using my own homemade soap. L'Amour Mongolia makes some beautiful unscented soothing soaps. And so I just love their line. My skin has been so delighted this week by using that cleansing product. And then it is my 100% full attention right now to start a dedicated trial to this Earthwise Beauty Black Locust Firming Concentrate, a seven week trial, but hot dang, I just keep going back to the green leaves. The green leaves face balm, it's coconut oil, jojoba oil. My skin loves this product. It, I wake up and my skin is so soft, it's so smooth, and I'm putting it everywhere that I have breakouts everywhere that I have problematic skin. And I am telling you right now, my skin, I, and then I put a light layer of these two together and my skin has been so happy, so soothed, no breakouts, um, no hormonal issues right now. So that's great. Anyway, I wanted to talk real fast kind about Green Beauty Theory and how I've been considering moving that content as much as I like having a presence for that type of content on Instagram, I'm considering moving it over here to YouTube and just making maybe once a month videos. I think I could commit to like a once a month, really hearty, meaty video for Green Beauty Theory because I just, friends, Instagram just really, I've just been researching social media. I read that book by Jonathan Haidt called The Righteous Mind. And I am, I just watched two videos by Casey Neistat this week. I'll link them both below. He talks about really limiting and controlling and being really mindful of his time on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm just so 100% in agreement with this style of thinking of the dangers that social media are really presenting to us. And one of the things he points out, and I, and I just so wholeheartedly agree, was he talked about how it's one thing to sit down to YouTube and consume a video that maybe gives you a time to think, time to reflect, time to ponder, time to focus. And it's another thing to be scrolling through these Instagrams, like, like, you're, like you're sitting in front of the TV with the remote, just clicking, 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 clicking. And um, what kind of, 
how Instagram and Twitter have really evolved into this highly polarized environment. So, for example, a friend today, this morning, sent me a screenshot of a post by an account called The Eco Well, which I have a big problem with that's been brewing for over a year and a half uh, about what I've observed on that account. And it said, clean beauty is unscientific. Now, we all know, we've talked about how clean beauty has problems, right? We know this, we see this, we talk about it a lot here. I talk about it on Green Beauty Theory. But what is not true and is actually a false statement and is a highly polarizing statement is that clean beauty is unscientific. I'm sorry, I'd really be interested to hear what Isabel Ramos from IUNA, who's doing cutting edge skin microbiome work. I mean, IUNA itself, it's just, it's just a perfect example to blow her theory out of the water. And it shows how much that account and maybe just conventional and beauty in general doesn't understand this movement of transparent green beauty, conscious consumerism, mindful consumerism, mindful beauty. And um, yeah, so I'm thinking I would, I've been thinking and I'm like, you know what might be really meaningful because Instagram, I'm really, I'm just moving away from it. I just, I find it hard to want to spend time there. Um, even though I miss some people dearly that I see on there. And I still want to check in once in a while, but I don't want to be spending a half an hour to an hour on Instagram every day. That's just, that's just, it's not good. And when I have two accounts, my own personal account and the Green Beauty Theory account, like it's just too much. So anyway, let me know, would you be interested if I move the Green Beauty Theory content back here to YouTube? Thanks for meeting me here. I can't tell you how much I love and enjoy the YouTube community.